Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Is nuclear power the only way we can reach net zero emissions? Or is it a threat to civilization and a distraction from other low carbon sources of energy such as solar and wind power? That's the question discussed with Elizabeth May in episode 10 of the Energy vs. Climate podcast hosted by Ed Whittingham and Dr. David Keith and Dr. Sarah Hastings-Simon. David Keith is a dispassionate Harvard professor and clean tech entrepreneur. And my argument basically is there are only two things that humanity is really going to do at large scale to decarbonize, and it's solar or nuclear. It could be that we do it with all solar and no nuclear, but it's really important to be clear-eyed about the limitations of other things and their scale and their environmental impacts. So lots of different ways to think about this, but if you look at estimates, and there are lots of estimates that are done by pretty reasonable, unbiased folks about the full life cycle power densities, that's the amount of power you get out per unit area, which is the opposite of the amount of area it takes to generate some power, Nuclear is order of sort of 50 to 100 watts per square meter. So on the benefits side, nuclear energy has very low impact on land use. Perhaps the biggest bugaboo for nuclear historically has been cost. Keith says costs of nuclear are currently about $10 per watt, but could possibly come down to around $5. Former Green Party leader Elizabeth May counters with the low cost of renewable energy. The way we analyze this within the Green Party is this. Any investments, particularly public investments of funds, needs to pass a certain uh, same metrics for every investment. And if nuclear succeeds, then nuclear succeeds. But the cost, you know, first question is per dollar invested, how many tons of greenhouse gases are avoided? For dollar invested, how many jobs are created? For a dollar invested, what's the distance between when you invest that dollar and you get the returns. On that analysis, you're just going to be every single time way better putting your money into energy efficiency and renewable energy. In the discussion about using nuclear power, the entire panel agreed no one should be talking about taking existing nuclear plants offline. I think it's pretty clear that we need, you know, all hands on deck on the fight against climate change. And so we cannot afford to pull, you know, zero carbon power sources offline. I think the thing for me that makes it hard to see a lot of investment going into building new nuclear is really just that issue of the time that we have um, and the alternatives available to get to net zero. Nuclear carries significant baggage when it comes to high costs, and Hastings Simon is saying rising standards will mean it's more expensive. Safety is where things got heated between Keith and May in the podcast. The most exposed two workers at Fukushima got about half a sievert dose each. What does that mean? That means about a 1% increase in your 30-year cancer risk. I would dispute that we know for sure what the, uh, the the total impact of Fukushima, but I know that after Three Mile Island, there were big disputes over how much cancer was created. Um, Dr. John Goffman wrote a, a book detailing how many people died after Three Mile Island from cancers. And there were people on the other side saying no one died from Three Mile Island. Whittingham says that the only credible conversation about new nuclear in Canada is around so-called small modular reactors, or SMRs. Look at Saskatchewan. And my understanding is Saskatchewan is seriously interested in an SMR, and an SMR that could go up two to three, to go up to 300 megawatts in size. You know, we're not going to build an SMR next because it, they aren't ready to be built, right? And even the, the sort of projects that are the most advanced are, are seeing some delays happening now. And so then the question becomes, do we, you know, need SMRs for to reach a fully decarbonized power grid? Or can we reach it instead with some combination of transmission lines, batteries, hydrogen, all these other things? I come down on the side of, I think it's very unlikely that SMRs are going to be the, you know, key answer to that question. Nuclear power is deeply stuck around the world with absurdly high costs, deep structural problems in the industry. Um, you know, to, it, at a highest level, the problems, the challenges with nuclear power are waste, cost, weapons proliferation, and, and reactor risk. 
This is just a tiny taste of a very nuanced conversation about nuclear energy's role in building a low-carbon economy. You can listen to the entire Energy vs. Climate podcast and do a deep dive into the nuclear debate. Head on down to greenenergyfutures.ca for links and more. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.